Mm. Guys, guess what? I can walk again. Kind of. Kind of. Watch this. Yes, I still have this annoying giant boot on, but... I can kind of walk. Kind of. It's better than the crutches, let's put it that way. Bits that get stuck on the side, they piss me off like crazy. It's recording. Good morning, beautiful people. Welcome back to another... I was gonna say a full day of eating. It's kind of a full day of eating, but it's more just a... Spend the day within... Within? Spend the day with me in the kitchen. Kind of a relaxed, intimate vlog. The thing is, I mean, I just showed you, proved to you, that I can kind of walk now. I'm on week five of being on crutches since I broke my foot. And yesterday was the first day when I tried, I attempted to walk in the boot. Um, it's kind of pain-free, which is amazing. But for the most part, over the last four to five weeks, I have been housebound, literally lying down with my leg up, um, just because I wanted to heal as quickly as possible. And for me, it's been the biggest challenge ever, but I've also found some comfort in it because I can just have these relaxing days where I relax in the kitchen and Relax in the kitchen. Usually I'm a very like active, always doing something, always running around, always buzzing kind of person. So the fact that I, I spoke about this in my previous video as well, but the fact that I've come to a complete halt, like I said, has been a huge challenge, but such a blessing in disguise as well. I feel like I've learned how to relax. Yes, it did take me 30 years to, to learn how to relax, but I've kind of, kind of done it. And yeah, a lot of my days have just been relaxing in the kitchen, playing around with different recipes, so I thought, why not film it? We can have a little intimate hangout in the kitchen day, eat some bomb food. Well, I'm gonna make some bomb food, and you should grab some bomb snacks to munch along, if you know what I'm saying. Obviously, this morning, the first thing, I had my watermelon, watermelon, as you saw. Actually, that's a lie. First thing I had was turmeric tea. Been drinking a lot of turmeric tea, and also, I don't make it, because I'm... I was gonna say I'm too lazy. I'm, I'm, it's not due to level of lazy. Uh, my girlfriend usually makes it, but it's a shot, it's like a powerful anti-inflammatory shot of like lemon, ginger, turmeric, black pepper, and I've been drinking that like pretty much every day, just because it helps so much with reducing inflammation. And I would like to say that that is the exact reason why my foot has healed so fast. But imagine if I actually made claims like that, that turmeric tea heals broken bones. I feel like Abby Sharp would like, give birth. In this smoothie, I have got frozen cherries, sweet frozen cherries. Whenever you buy frozen cherries, make sure you check the label. I mean, I know it's obvious, but sometimes people just grab. I usually just grab. And the sweet ones, I've said it before, but they literally are as sweet as dates. So in smoothies, they are just blissful. This is a chocolate cherry smoothie. I don't know, I just love the combination of chocolate and cherry. My favorite combination with chocolate is chocolate and mint. Or is it chocolate and orange? Chocolate and mint, chocolate and orange, vote down below. I feel like if I had to choose, it would be chocolate and mint, but I also feel like that's quite controversial. So yeah, in the smoothie, I've got frozen cherries, carob. It gives it a beautiful, not so bitter, but more caramelly e kind of thing. So a big spoon of carob, quarter of a cup of hemp seeds for all of those good omega-3s, protein, anti-inflammatory goodness. Also makes it nice and thick and creamy. A couple of large, squishy medjool dates. And one scoop of the raw cacao vegan protein powder from Vivo Life, which I'll link down below. This raw cacao flavor, I don't use it that much because you know I'm just hooked on the salted caramel one. But when I've got a lot of other flavors going on in there, and I just want like a, like a, a, a subtle, sweet, chocolatey hint, that's when I use the raw cacao, because I'd say out of all the flavors, it's the most mild, but mild in a good way, like a smooth, subtle, sweet way that just bumps up the protein and makes the smoothie like 55 times more filling, if you know what I'm saying. Mm. Whoa, it's a bit too sweet. Never thought I'd say that. I think it's the combination of the cherries and the dates. Oh, and the oat milk. Sorry, I used oat milk as well. That's why it's extra sweet. 
yeah, I have two more weeks with this thing on and then hopefully I will be able to resume life as normal, whatever that was. I honestly can't remember what it feels like to go for a walk or to drive. I have just started going back to the gym and doing upper body stuff, which for me was just like mentally so relieving. Cause again, as much as this time has been a huge blessing and just like slowed me down, made me really search within all of that kind of spiritual crap, which is actually true. I've also missed the gym and activity and just everything a lot. I was thinking, what could I make for lunch, which would intrigue you guys and make you salivate and make you want to make it straight away. And there really is only one answer for that because I don't know how many of you guys have my ebook, but and because I've only showed it on this channel, I think once, and it was like two years ago, um, and it's my vegan carbonara, but the way that I make it is quite different. I make the sauce from hemp seeds, cashews, butternut squash, so it's a very healthy, yet very creamy and decadent sauce. It's the most delicious pasta ever, and I think it, well not I think, it's definitely the recipe that you guys have recreated and reposted the most. And I realized that I haven't eaten it literally in about a year. I actually forgot how to make it, but I remember how good it is. It's been a blessing to, even when I'm not filming, to be able to put more effort, more love, more time into my meals and just enjoying food more than ever. Which I always say, food is not just about, you know, macros, micros, nutrition. It's all about the experience. It's all about the flavor. It's all about the love. One thing I forgot actually, one thing I... <clears throat> Speaking of cravings and things that I am craving, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the quercetin. I think I said this in my last video in onions, but my body is craving onions like crazy. Again, quercetin is a very powerful, like anti-inflammatory antioxidant, which is very rich in onion, especially white onion. I have literally been eating like one or two large white raw onions a day, which again, my girlfriend is not very happy about, but she has to deal with it because I'm just addicted. You know, like in the Grinch where he just takes like a big, like a big bite of the onion. That's basically me right now. But anyways, I'm gonna go slurp and I'll see you at lunch. Cheers. Just snacking on a couple more of these. These are the Sakari dates. They're very different to Medjool dates because they kind of, can you see that? They kind of just crack and they actually have like crystallized sugar inside. That's how sweet they are. Beautiful. I mean, it doesn't look that beautiful, but trust me, they are the sweetest dates of all time. Before I get cooking with lunch, actually, can we all just agree that the best flavor for Cliff Bars is the white chocolate macadamia one. Like, come on guys, like you can't deny that. I've tried all the flavors, all the flavors, and this one from day one, from day dot, has been numero uno. Like it's just the best. But what I wanted to tell you was, I mean, if you're in the UK, you already know this, but basically, I mean, you're probably thinking, why are you wearing a hoodie, Mars? I mean, number one, I'm always wearing a hoodie. That's a lie, when it's hot, I'm not. But guys, we genuinely did not get the summer here in the UK. It's the end of August, I don't know what happened. And for me especially, like, I've, I've already said this, but my mood is highly affected by the weather, the way that I feel, and especially having a broken foot and being sedentary. Yes, I say sedentary. I, I know that you, most of you guys are, are from the US, and in my last video, you were ripping me to pieces. You guys rinsed me in the comments for saying sedentary, because apparently you say it sedentary, like sedentary. Sedent sedentary, I don't know. In the UK we say sedentary, or maybe we don't, but I do, so yeah. But because I've been sedentary, or sedentary, whatever you wanna say it, like at least if it was hot, I could've just laid in the garden and sunbathed, but the weather, like the sun has not come out for the last six weeks. I mean, it has, sporadically. It comes out for like five minutes, and then I'll like strip off, run outside, not run outside, hop outside, or like, go outside on my crutches and then lay down and then one minute later it's dark and miserable again. I can't believe that we just actually did not get a summer. I really, really, really um, want to complain but I'm just not sure who to. Let's make some pasta. I will... I'm trying to find the butternut squash. There it is. Again, I'll leave the exact ingredients and instructions on the screen. I'm kind of changing it up a bit because I've realized, as I haven't made this in so long, I don't have the exact ingredients. So instead of tamari, I'm going to use coconut aminos. But the main switch that you can make, this is a butternut squash, I mean, actually it's a golden butternut squash, which is like twice as sweet as a regular butternut squash. It just is, and it's much more orange inside, but 
Again, if you can't find or if you don't have butternut squash, you can use any sweet starch, like root veggie, for this recipe. So you could use steamed carrots, um, sweet potato. It works with parsnips as well. Parsnips is like really mm, starchy and creamy, so you can definitely use that as well. The recipe also calls for steaming the butternut squash before we blend it into the sauce with all of the good stuff. Guys, did I tell you that this recipe also includes tahini? I mean, obviously, but um, I felt like I didn't need to say it, but just in case you didn't know, yes, there is tahini in the sauce as well. So yeah, my steamer is broken, so I am just going to chop this up and roast it. If anything, it's just gonna bring out the flavor even more, because when you roast, it caramelizes, gets more sweet, you know what I'm saying? You might think it's strange to put cinnamon in a carbonara sauce, but trust me, trust me, the cinnamon takes it to a different level, like a different level, different level, so. Don't skip on the cinnamon or the paprika either. Just don't. I swear, cutting butternut squash is like full body, full body hit workout. No need to go to the gym if you cut butternut squash. I swear, you just like burn 4,000 cows whilst Ugh, chopping this. me you can also leave the skin on considering I'm blending this I probably should skin it but I really can't be fucked um, and it's gonna be just as delicious so skin on baby Also, my original recipe calls for fried mushrooms and onion. Um, don't have that. So what I'm gonna do vegetable, vegetable wise, is just throw in some fresh spinach, spinach, maybe some basil as well at the end. And yeah, this really is the best pasta recipe of all time. I know I say that about every single pasta recipe I make, but According to you guys, this one's the best. In terms of the sauce, um, you can, because I know I mentioned earlier it's cashew-based. It's not really cashew-based, there's just a few cashews in there. Only half a cup in the whole recipe, and the sauce makes multiple servings. For normal people, I'll probably eat the whole sauce in one go. But I always, whenever I'm making any kind of sauce with nuts, um, I often use macadamia nuts for sauces as well, I always switch half for hemp seeds, just because you get the same creaminess and nuttiness and, you know, the same texture that you're after. But you also bump up the omega-3s as well, which is really important, just, you know, just overall to have a good balance. I often don't have a good balance because I eat so much fucking tahini, which is not about to stop. But yeah, hemp seeds is where it's at. So if you've got hemp seeds, always substitute half of the nuts for the hemp seeds. Yeah. As you can see, these are all beautifully squishy and caramelized. This is why I always, always just prefer roasting over steaming, boiling. It just brings out the flavor by like, 25 times. All right, let's get this sauce going. Soaked cashews, always soak so that they blend more smooth, you know what I mean? Hemp seeds. Couple spoons of nooch, which always freaks me out because I always think it looks like fish food. Do you know what I mean? Few spoons of good runny tahini, and by good runny tahini, you know what I mean? The good, good liquid gold. Beautiful. Do you know what, let's just pour it in from the jar, shall we? We need two packed cups of the steamed, well, roasted in this case, butternut squash. Butternut squash. A little dash of coconut aminos. Again, the original recipe calls for tamari. You can also use soy sauce, but coconut aminos is, I don't know. It's like a sweet version of tamari, and I just, I just fucking love it. Like, I could drink it straight from the bottle. Some sweet cinnamon, paprika. And the juice of two fresh lemons. And lots of pips, apparently. Gonna put in a little bit of garlic granules as well. Fresh garlic, always better, but I don't know. For lazy people like me, granules. And let's blend. I'm just gonna thin it with a little bit of water. And a bit more fresh lemon juice. Best part is always tasting it off this bit. Guys, that's even better than before. Mm. Gonna throw in some baby spinach. 
How is that baby spinach? That's like the biggest spinach leaf I've ever seen in my whole life. <laughs> That's like a romaine bush. Just gonna let the spinach wilt a little bit in the heat and then we're gonna pour over the sauce. Oh, did you look at that? The squelchy sound. <laughs> I love it. Would you look at that? Beautiful. Guys, if only you knew. Well, you will know when you make this how creamy and delicious this is. And I swear, the addition of the cinnamon, next level. By the way, guys, if you're wondering why I'm always wearing underwear in here, it's just because I can't be bothered to get fully dressed when I film. Like, I'm, I'm happy to put a hoodie on, but that's as far as it's going. Even that's an effort for me. Because usually it's just boxer shorts, so I don't know what I'm talking about now. But anyways, um, you all know what's coming next. I'm gonna go waft this down. Cheers. Mm. All right, guys. Today we are reviewing. I love to support small companies. This um, lovely lady that owns this company has sent me multiple nut butters in her time, and they've all been incredible. Anyways, her company's called Munch a Bunch, and she makes some of the most incredible creations. Like she makes flavors work together that just should not work together. And this one is the chocolate coconut one. No, sorry, chocolate coconut hazelnut butter, and it is smooth. Okay, that's actually pretty runny and smooth, and that's a very respectable texture. I assume that this is kind of going to taste like coconutty Nutella. Cheers. It's not sweet enough. It's very, very hazelnutty. Like it tastes like I'm eating pure hazelnuts, which would make sense because that is the number one ingredient in there. I don't get the maple syrup at all. Coconut, don't really get the flavor, but I get the bits. Again, very, very respectable texture. This would be incredible on loads of different things. If I was to eat this out of the jar, which I will, I don't know, I might give it a pinch of salt or sweeten it up a little bit more. I just spilled some on the table. Like I said, all her flavors are incredible though. I think she makes them at home as well. Um, I'll leave her Instagram on the screen and yeah. Again, this one is very delicious. I just want it to be a bit more sweet. Guys, I actually have a bit of a confession to make because it is actually the next day. Um, last night my dinner was a mess. By a mess, I mean it was just a progression of me snacking on things continuously throughout the evening and night. Um, largely salt and vinegar rice cakes covered in mounds of hummus and other things but I wanted to give you a proper recipe so we're gonna make my peanut butter tofu I've shown you different variations of this before sometimes I air fry it sometimes I pan fry it today I'm gonna to roast it it's a very very simple recipe minimal ingredients but just maximum pleasure it has to be my favorite way of making tofu of all time because it gives it like this, it's, it's not just the peanut butter flavor, it gives it like a beautiful, crispy, peanut buttery crunch on the outside, and then tender and kind of chewy within. And I also make it with onion and red pepper, and it really is the best thing to toss with rice, pasta, have it on top of a salad, use it as a sandwich filling. So that's what we're gonna make now. I do apologize, but I wanted to give you something that you can actually make and enjoy rather than just watch me stuff my face with weird things, so. I could have just pretended that this was the same day, but I just want to keep it 100% legit, and I really hope you enjoy this recipe. If you make it, it's impossible that you won't enjoy this recipe. If you don't have peanut butter, peanut butter, you can make this with any other nut butter. Um, you can make it with almond butter. I think I've made it with pecan butter before as well, which was incredible. If you're allergic to nuts or you don't have any nut butter in the house, you can make this with seed butter, like sunflower seed butter, pumpkin seed butter, of course, liquid gold. Let's get cooking. I'm snacking on just watermelon wine from earlier. Block of firm tofu. Big large onion, of course. Again. Sauce, very, very simple. All you need is some good, runny, salted 
smooth peanut butter. Peanut butter. Be generous, guys, as well, yeah? Like, this is all about the crispy peanut butter coating. Because the peanut butter is salted, I'm not going to add more salt, but I am going to add a, a bit more salt with coconut aminos, which gives it a little bit of sweetness. Helps this to caramelize a little bit. And a spritz of fresh lime. Oh, and garlic granules. Again, if you're not as lazy as me, use fresh. Get everything nice and coated in the sauce. This is also really good with a little bit of sesame oil, which I don't have today, but yeah. Okie dokie, into the oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. Just wait until it's like nice and crispy. To your level of crispy anyway, I like it crispy crispy. Just snacking on some of these golden kiwis while the tofu is in the oven. These are the sweetest things in the whole world. Mm. Can't ever, 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 ever have a bowl without some avocado. Ah, avocado. Some roasted carrots, butternut squash, and sweet potato. Beautiful sun-dried, actually these are sun-blush tomatoes. And a big generous dollop of hummus. You look at that. Beautiful. This crispy tofu, guys, I'm telling you. Cheers.